Hello, today for review I've got a really interesting piece of gear, it's an updated version of player made by Dazen Ray, Prelude, and it's named DTR1+. Plus. Previous version was named uh, just DTR1 and this game plus in the name. First uh, version or first uh, revision of this player didn't become a huge bestseller, but it quickly gathered a lot of popularity because it's a pretty unusual device nowadays. It's just pure audio player without Android, streaming services, Bluetooth, but uh, it's compact and at the same time it's powerful and it's really focused on delivering maximum sound performance. Because engineer Anson, who stands behind uh, all Dazen Ray products, really uh, dedicated to, to creating the great sound and delivering his vision. Um, so almost all development here, including hardware and software, is done by him. And results were great by DTR1, and here they are only improved. It's an unusual device, it's built with AK4490 digital to analog converter and it has a separate uh, batteries and separate power to deliver clean uh, uh, power supply both for digital and for the analog parts of the schema and it has unusual uh, high voltage amplification module so it delivers up to 6 volts uh, uh, for 16 ohms of impedance, so basically it's a, it's a uh, small beast that, that uh, can drive a lot of uh, tough to drive headphones and at the same time it's a pretty small case. Price is pretty high, it's $1000, but actually it's the price of a device that is dedicated to the sound, that is created in small batches and Probably I'd say enough, links to the official site will be in the description and let's have a closer look. So, player came in small, nice black cardboard box, no uh, fancy polygraphy, just uh, foiled embossing with the company's name and actually the, you can see that uh, slogan describing the all ideas behind that. And Accessory set inside is also really, really small. So you'll get player itself and charging device. It's a bit unusual here. And some, some envelope, probably with warranty card inside. I actually didn't open it before, I listened to this player already, but I didn't go into this envelope, so yeah. Quick start guide, small amount of information, but anyway, it's not that interesting. So let's have a closer look here. You can see it's really minimalistic design, it's pretty compact, much uh, smaller than waste majority of modern players. Uh, with interesting combination of black and gold buttons. So, on the bottom you'll see the headphones output, line output and the charging socket. It doesn't have a traditional USB, here use the separate charger. So here it is, you plug your USB Type-C to this uh, charging model and you connecting this connector to the bottom part of the player. It's done because here used high voltage batteries and they require external charger to be charged properly. So, and building that, that power supply inside of the player body will increase it. So it's the case when it's done in order to reduce the size of the player and make it more pocketable and more convenient. Nice. Absolutely rectangular shape that I think many will like. Speaking about the charging, uh, it charges in about uh, 2 hours or so and it will be enough for about 8 hours, depending on the load, but 8 hours is just like average numbers. On the right side there are 3 buttons, <laughs> lower one is for on-off and the big one is for volume down and upper, upper one for volume up. And on the front panel, five buttons with nice, well-defined clicks. Actually, I like the 
design is good, nothing is rattling or squeaking, it feels really solidly built, so let's press a button, it will start booting up, on the back side you can see nice interesting uh, orientation of, uh, of uh, player's name and model name, so looks really fancy. On the front panel there is a screen, it's not uh, super bright, so under the bright light you need to cover it with uh, your hand, uh, a bit brighter screen would be nice. Let's remove the protector film here, but still it's not super bright unfortunately, but anyway resolution is nice and uh, uh, it controls and all stuff is done well, but about the menu we'll talk later. So, to summarize this part, as you can see, in terms of design and build quality, player is pretty, pretty good. So, let's talk about the menu and controls. Player is really fast in booting up, it took less than 15 seconds, uh, it's, uh, it has a custom operation system built with Linux kernel, and main menu consists of few items. So, then first one is going to the now playing screen, and on the now playing screen you will get uh, information about the track, its name and album cover. Pressing bottom left you are going back to the menu. You can get a list of all songs, list by artist, media library scan is really fast. Favorites list, file browser, you can go to some folders, you can select uh, some folder, uh, some file and it will start playing, you can go back and return to the menu and also there is a settings. So in settings you can get system information, languages, few of them, play mode, backlight time, brightness, power key uh, to main menu if you want this function, uh, QE file support, uh, play through folders or not, will uh, tracks be switchable when uh, screen is off, gain, actually you can see that the, here you are getting 4 levels of gain with first uh, DTR view, first DTR had some issues because it also was pretty powerful and with sensitive in-ear monitors it was uh, too loud and here you can get a nice granularity in selecting proper gains that will match your earphones. Line out gain you can select uh, one that you will need if you need selection of uh, few filters, uh, channel balance, idle shutdown, Timer shutdown, database update if you need it, and uh, reset all settings. So, nice minimalistic approach that uh, works uh, pretty good. And on the now playing screen, you can play pause with middle button, right button will go to the next uh, folder, and with up down you changing the tracks, with left you going back. And Pressing and holding central button, you can return to the folders, add to favorites, delete the music, select play mode, activate queue. Basically, here is almost full settings menu available here. So, in terms of controls, this player is really nice because it has nice, well defined clicks. Buttons are really pleasant to touch and hold, and in terms of controls, it's really. Uh, nice sense to go back from the sensor screen, back to the basics, back to the tactile clicky buttons. And of course about the sound and most logical, most obvious choice of earphones to show with this player will be uh, Desenray Tender, their own planar magnetic in-ear monitors. Also, kind of spoiler, they sounding really good, but they will be the subject of one of the next reviews. So, meanwhile, they will just rest here on the table, just teasing you to subscribe to my channel and wait for the next review. And in terms of sound, it's it's the case when player exceeds its uh, price tire in terms of the sound. Because it's dynamic, it's lively, it's energetic, it has perfect control and actually it's done everything really nice. It's a really technical high-end sound, but at the same time with uh, additional emotions, with highlight of macro dynamics, 
So basically it's technical but uh, fun type of sounding, really musical and engaging. It's not trying to be super natural or super monitoring or so something like that, but at the same time you'll get a great resolution and all other stuff. But let's talk about everything step by step. Bass goes really deep, it has a good uh, layering, it has great textures, it controlled well all over the whole range. So from the upper bass to the deepest layers of bass, this player controls a lot, perfectly delivering nice uh, mix of punch and impact, rendering textures nicely and uh, playing great both with uh, electronic music where you need additional, not additional, where you need weight. Actually, it's not adding weight, of course, it's absolutely linear and technical in this aspect, but uh, if uh, weight is present in record, it will deliver the perfect amount of it. And at the same time, it will uh, highlight and um, small nuances, making acoustic instruments more rich, more saturated, a bit uh, more fun than they are in real life, but at the same time it won't exaggerate their size like some players does, they will stay, stay of perfect uh, size and you'll get all that sense of realism and small nuances and details. And the uh, first example it's uh, Musica Nuda, I just can't skip them, and it's uh, Say Forte Papa, it's a really good track to demonstrate the technical capabilities of this player. It uh, sounds really engaging with uh, uh, with that double bass and builds a perfect contrast with uh, vocal. And the second track, it's uh, Juno Reactor Shine. It's just basic Juno Reactor, nice engaging bass line with uh, not overdone but requires good low frequencies performance and this player delivers it nicely and in a rich saturated way so in terms of low frequencies it will please all side all uh, type of listeners and actually same applies to the mids they have a really good resolution but at the same time not focused on the micro contrast it's not that type of player that will like dissect the music to the scene layers it will uh, represent all small details but it won't push them forward and at the same time it, it's highlighting a bit emotions actually not a bit slightly more than a bit not too much but uh, in a noticeable way sounding really drivey really energetic and highlight slightly highlighting dynamics it gives also great sense of realism of for the instruments for the vocals and uh, it sounds uh, really engaging and uh, fun imaginary stage is above average both in width and in depth noticeably above not the hugest one but still noticeably above with good layer depth layering and with good instrument positioning. It's not uh, super critical for the quality of record, but definitely will benefit of something with uh, good quality of record. And of course I won't speak about technical stuff like uh, realism of instruments, vocal and so on. Especially it's good with genres that require slightly highlighted emotions and I'm not... Uh, I'm not meaning only something like rock or metal, but it's also really good with uh, properly recorded jazz when, with emotional performers, with uh, some soul vocal that uh, has a lot of emotions and so on. And uh, speaking about the examples, first one is just uh, classical. Classical example, it's uh, Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. I usually don't use Dire Straits for testing because I like them and uh, I just can't uh, be critical with Dire Straits, they sounding great everywhere. But this player with its musical and driving representation, it just revitalizes this track, giving a great sense of additional emotions, giving nice uh, sense of uh, presence. And second one, it's uh, Gladiator, Hans Zimmer, Life in Prague, uh, that uh, popery of music from the Gladiator, and uh, this player also sounds engaging here with good sense of uh, big hall, maybe not the best per performance in terms of uh, spaciousness, but still on the bigger side of things. Uh, and. Uh, 
uh, also giving nice sense of emotions because it's really complex track with different uh, type of uh, tunes uh, uh, flowing from one to another and uh, many of them re require good dynamic uh, representation and this player delivers it greatly and in terms of treble actually it's also a good example of a player overperforming uh, the price tire and i mean layering it has a really good uh, treble layering uh, above average extension and uh, i'm not, once again i won't say about obvious things like attacks decays control resolution it's all here and this player doesn't have that problems it's just uh, performs nicely but at the same time it will give you great uh, treble layering and nice saturation of uh, uh, with overtones and will give you all that nuances airness spaciousness that is typical for the rich layering and uh, first example of uh, treble it's uh, heaven on their minds from the jesus christ superstar great vocal performance and good accompaniment and all that things goes high to the treble area and this player controls that and delivers uh, really great and the uh, second one is poor butterfly from arnedum nerus live at jazz jazz at the pound shop uh, or live at the pound shop and it's a great uh, record that gives you the sense of uh, uh, of uh, of that nightclub where this concert was recorded and thanks to the rich and saturated treble you will get the sense of presence speaking about the pairings uh, as you can easily guess it's a virtual universal you can plug some sensitive in ear monitors at low gain you can plug some tough to drive high impedance models on the extreme gain and it will drive them really well maybe super tough to drive models not perfectly but that models usually require some desktop amplifier but if you have some high impedance model it will uh, uh, drive it nicely if you have some complex load like this one with uh, relatively low sensitivity and low impedance it's zero problems so nice and universal in terms of power and amplification and uh, speaking about the compression so first and most obvious one it's the previous version of Dezen Ray. here you'll get uh, better treble layering you'll get uh, better refined sound i'm not speaking about things like improved usability and so on it's obvious uh, so more refined treble and uh, tighter more uh, better controlled low frequencies with better sense of realism so it's a step forward comparing with DTR and in this price tire there are a lot of players of course and one is more affordable that I wanted to mention it's QLS 361 uh, because it also has that uh, ideas of minimalism and uh, push to the limit sound performance but uh, 361 is more natural more focused on the smallest details and nuances while this one is more engaging and energetic and actually it's the main difference of this player comparing with ibasso for example because ibasso both 240 and 300 uh, both are more natural this one more highlighting emotions and drive and actually same applies to the uh, Aston Kern Khan Alpha, it's also more natural. And uh, also uh, in that pile goes uh, High B R6 220 because it's also more natural, more monitoring, while this one is more energetic and more engaging. And uh, what we also what we got in this price tire too, uh, Fios M11 Plus uh, is slightly more weighty and. Uh, here you get better defined treble with better layering and uh, Shanling M6 Pro 2020 also energetic also highlighting emotions but less highlighting dynamics than this one another pretty close competitor is KN N6 Mark II but uh, here you get also slightly better defined uh, both and slightly better defined deeper bass and uh, higher treble Probably I recalled all models that I could recall 
and uh, that that was Desenray DTR1 Plus. It's expensive uh, and uh, it's just minimalistic in terms of functionality, but in terms of sound, it definitely tries to deliver the maximum value and it succeeds here. So if you get a chance, I really recommend you listening to it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. And of course, have a nice day.